Welcome you all to Marine Mechanics e-learning modules and this module is all about emergency belt suction valve. Today we're going to talk about something very important that is actions to be taken during engine room flooding. Your responsibilities or duties will differ whether you are chief engineer or management level officer or an operational level. Let's talk what we have to do on if you're an operational level officer. So as you see the engine room is getting flooded our prime aim should be that the water should not touch the main engine flywheel or it should not touch the main generators. It is for this reason clearly note that it is for this reason the main generators are not placed on the bottom platform and it is placed one, plat one or two platforms above the main engine bottom platform. So if you see engine room is getting flooded first action what you have to do is activate the general emergency alarm. If you cannot find the general emergency alarm in the bottom platform just raise the fire alarm or if you have a, a, a public address system just announce it or if you have the facility to call the bridge from bottom platform pick up the phone and then inform bridge and then let bridge inform everybody make an announcement. Once the alarm is raised your action must be immediately to start the bilge pump and put it in the bilge holding tank as much as possible. And next is to start the oily water separator provided you know you have the authority to do so. If you are a first engineer or second engineer you can do that you know. And if you are a fourth engineer wait for the instructions to start the oily water separator. Now again what you have to do is you can uh, probably try to uh, um, wait for the chief engineer's instructions. So then in the meantime you can go and identify the water ingress source. Usually if it's going to be engine room flooding you can't near or you can not really go and search for the exact location of the water ingress because the water is going to really gush in at high force. So as a watchkeeping engineer rush to control room start additional generators because you're going to start as many pumps as possible or you're going to slow down the main engine we don't know. So start the additional generator and depending upon the source of water ingress try to stop the ship you know you can ask the bridge to stop or if you can uh, take the controls to ECR ask the chief engineer and bring down the fuel lever to zero that's all. So and uh, once the ship is stopped in the chief officer usually takes the decision to adjust the trim and list as required inform DPA and other authorities if the vessel is in port or uh, near the coastal waters that master will take care of. Your prime aim should be to concentrate on the bilge pumps and transfer all the possible bilges to bilge holding tank, primary bilge tank or any other waste collection tank. Run the OWS, enter in engine room logbook. After which here are some more sequences. If the flooding happens in port, inform chief engineer and duty officer on bridge and usually in case of tankers the cargo control room and raise the general emergency alarm. Now main point is to start the additional generator. After getting approval or with the presence of chief engineer definitely he will not allow you to open the emergency build section because he himself will open that valve and try to pump out the bilges. Try to locate and isolate the leakage and whatever chief engineer orders just try to follow it. If the vessel is at sea open the emergency build section valve after chief engineer's permission or master's permission. So it is for this reason we have to keep the emergency build section valve in good working order weekly grease it and free up the handle so that in case of emergency you can open it. One main aspect is you should have a big F key or F lever to open the valve you need not go and search it so that in case of emergency to open the valve you don't get it you know and uh, stop the main engines as required generators must be running to uh, give sufficient power for the ballast pumps or main seawater pumps as required. So that's going to be your engine room flooding response.